morning and welcome to the Marshall Islands. Do you want to see what mountain climbing looks like on Marshall Islands? And this is the summit of Majuro, the atoll and capital of Marshall Islands. But it's not just the highest point on this atoll, it's one of the highest points in the whole country. And from this, you can see why Marshall Islands is one of the most vulnerable countries to climate change. This bridge, by the way, is the number four attraction in Marshall Islands, currently on TripAdvisor. I think that's maybe a statement about how little there is to do on land in Marshall Islands, as well as a tongue-in-cheek statement about climate change. To get an idea of how vulnerable this country is to climate change, you just come and have a walk along the beach. Tide is currently going out, so we have a good maybe 30 metres of beach. But the high tide mark is at the rocks up here. In fact, lapping up to the rocks. And to give you an idea about how vulnerable that makes this country, this country is actually long and thin when seen from the air. I could actually pick up a rock, hoof it across the road and land on the beach on the other side, and that's the other edge of the country. We're a long way from doing the Indian Pacific. It's when you come to these countries and you just see how low they are that you suddenly realise there's going to be a lot of climate refugees coming and what are we going to do about them? So John Marshall tiddly bopped through here in 1788 giving the Marshall Islands his name quite clearly. The 29 atolls and five islands were German territory before World War I and were ceded to Japan as part of the Treaty of Versailles. Many of us forget Japan was on the same side as the Allies in World War I. During World War II, there was brutal fighting here for the Americans to displace the Japanese. And like on the other islands like Kiribati, the beaches here were very short and small and very few areas for defensive positions if you're attacking, which means the hand-to-hand -hand fighting here was really nasty. The Americans took over in 1944 and maintained the Marshall Islands as a trustee territory. Now, once the United States took over the Marshall Islands, they thought, Ripple, what a great place to do some nuclear testing. So up in Bikini Atoll, the Marshall Islands became self-governing in 1986 and got full independence in 1999, but not before the Americans promised them lots of compensation and cleaning up from the nuclear tests. One aspect of the nuclear testing here on Marshall Islands is the atolls that were used required the forced removal of the people who lived there. And they were promised compensation and it never came. And many of the evacuees from the atolls are still away from their land. Only one of the islands promised to be cleaned up has been cleaned up and the Marshall Islanders are still waiting A for the clean up and B for most of the compensation. Until such time as courts like these are used to get justice for many of the people on Marshall Islands, the rest of the community, rest of life continues on island time, slowly and casually. Personally, I'm not so big on having grandma and grandpa in the front garden. The Marshall Islands have continued their zoom through the space race because all of SpaceX's five test flights of their giant rockets happened here. So Marshall Islands, another country vulnerable to climate change. Let's now move on to Tuvalu, the other of the least visited countries.